right. So now that we got that out of the way, um, I would like to introduce myself briefly. My name is Joseph W. Jata, and um, I am an alumni of the TDR um, Ghana, and I'm honored to be the moderator of this session. Uh, but before I go forward, I would like to uh, say one or two things about the speaker, who is Dr. Sheikh Omar Dumbuya, who is a PhD candidate in in Bernard Nochi, Bernard Notch Institute of Tropical Medicine in Germany. Uh, Sheikh Omar Dumbuya is actually from the same batch as me. Uh, we met at the School of Public Health in Ghana in 2019. Sheikh Omar Dumbuya got his medical <laughs> doctorate degree in general medicine at the Faculty of Medicine and Odostomatology of Bamako, Mali in 2018. And he got a master's degree of public health uh, with specialization in epidemiology at the University of Ghana School of Public Health in 2020. He has been working in the prof with working with prof of epidemiology Seydou Dumbia's team at University of Clinical Research Center uh, in Bamako. And this has been going on since when he was a medical student. In November 2021, Selma Dumbi joined uh, Bernard Nott Institute of Tropical Medicine as a PhD candidate in epidemiology. Selma Rumbuya is in the working group led by Dr. Daniela Fusco, who is his current supervisor uh, in his PhD program in Germany. So ladies and gentlemen, without further ado, I would like to welcome Shahmar Dumbuya to make his presentation on vaccine hesitancy, COVID-19 vaccine hesitancy. Sir, you are invited to make your presentation. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Joseph. Uh, please, can you see my screen? Perfect. And yeah. Great. So, good morning. Uh, check, sorry, check. You are not yeah. in the interview. We are seeing uh, the um, the other uh, part of the screen. You need to switch. Oh. Swap oh. display. You have on top left. Voila. Mm -hmm. I think uh, no. Yeah. Now it's perfect. Perfect. Okay. Thank you very much, Daniela. And uh, good morning, everyone. Good afternoon and good evening, depending on when you are uh, currently. So um, uh, I'm very happy to uh, talk about this topic uh, uh, with you um, on COVID vaccine hesitancy in uh, West Africa. So a short uh, story to begin. And yeah, a short, sh short story to begin. And since uh, March 2020, uh, COVID has been uh, uh, in center of uh, um, many global uh, health uh, debates uh, worldwide, and uh, this uh, was followed by the development of uh, several uh, vaccines uh, to control uh, this uh, uh, pandemic. So uh, many vaccines uh, uh, have been uh, proven uh, that they provide strong protection against uh, uh, serious illness, hospitalization, and death. And but uh, uh, unfortunately, uh, vaccine was uh, seen as uh, um, as a as a trade instead of uh, opportunity uh, within uh, um, general population and sometimes uh, even work healthcare worker in many many uh, region uh, um, of the world, including West Africa. So, uh, vaccine hesitancy, uh, as you know, is uh, a potential barrier to uh, any successful implementation of uh, immunization uh, program. So that's become quickly uh, one of the major problem um, beside the COVID uh, um, pandemic. So it will become um, very problematic uh, in many places of the world and due to uh, the concept of infodemic, uh, like uh, uh, we were, there were many uh, unqualified people uh, spreading information about uh, vaccination, about uh, uh, the pathogeny of COVID, and this uh, led 
to many people to doubt about the effectiveness, uh, the safety of uh, the equivalence of vaccine developed by uh, researchers to uh, control this pandemic. So what is vaccine hesitance? Like uh, a person who is hesitant, uh, as we can see uh, in, the, uh, in the figure left, so a vaccine hesitant uh, uh, is someone who is uh, uh, not sure uh, to uh, accept or to refuse uh, category uh, a vaccination. Um, in other terms, we can say like uh, uh, someone who delay or refuse uh, sometimes. But uh, there are another category, some other categories, as we can see in the figure, the second category and the fourth category. So those people, the people who refuse but not sure or who accept and um, not sure are likely to be uh, really uh, hesitant. So what is vaccine hesitancy? This uh, is a description from WHO. Uh, first of all, it's important to know that, uh, that like this uh, um, attitude uh, results from a disease outbreak or the death. Uh, one of the um, important example here is uh, the case of uh, uh, the, the AstraZeneca and the development of uh, 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 blood uh, slots uh, due to um, the side effect of AstraZeneca, which happened in many European countries. So this information were not uh, uh, adequately spread among and it uh, uh, quit pandemic uh, panic and some people become to get uh, hesitant to get a COVID vaccine. So a simple way to define, to define vaccine hesitancy uh, is uh, um, it is a delay in acceptance or refusal of vaccine despite the availability of vaccine services. WHO uh, identified today vaccine hesitancy as one of the top 10 uh, global health threats. So, that means it's uh, become a very major issue, not only for COVID, but uh, that can also go beyond the uh, uh, COVID pandemic. <clears throat> so now uh, let's uh, talk about, uh, let's have a look at uh, uh, the funding of uh, a research consortium uh, called uh, Africa COVID Vaccine uh, Hesitancy Consortium. So this is uh, a, um, a group of uh, an international group of uh, research uh, institutes, uh, including uh, uh, one uh, European uh, uh, institute. So I'm going to uh, present uh, a bit some funding uh, of uh, this uh, consortium. So this consortium was uh, initiated in 2020, uh, a couple of week, a couple months after uh, COVID was declared as pandemic. And but start uh, um, actually um, office, um, formally operating in uh, from 2021 uh, to now. So as you can see, uh, there are six uh, country uh, working on this uh, consortium. So uh, one European country and five uh, West African country. So they led. Uh, um, Institute is the uh, uh, Bernard Knott uh, Institute for Tropical uh, Medicine. And the other institute, uh, I mean West African Institute are located uh, in uh, the, the five countries. And we have uh, um, uh, ERSS, uh, Institute de Research and Science de la Santé uh, du Burkina, in University of Sierra Leone, Santé Plus uh, uh, from Guinea, Conakry, um, University of Chakanta Job uh, from uh, Senegal and uh, University Clinical Research Center from Mali. So uh, BNITM is the uh, lead and use um, the role of uh, sponsorship of uh, the project and the, the principal investigator of uh, the consortium project uh, is from BNITM, uh, who is uh, Dr. Daniela Fusco. Uh, she is a uh, Actually, my supervisor, uh, very experienced in biomedical research and, and implementation research. So this is uh, like an overview of the consortium who work uh, 
together uh, since uh, 2021 to investigate. Uh, so this is uh, the method from uh, X. I'm gonna just give uh, a short overview of uh, how uh, actually X work uh, to investigate vaccine hesitancy within the five country. So first of all, the target population are two group, healthcare workers and general population. And general population also is divided by two subgroups, urban area and, uh, and, and, and rural area. So uh, it consists to conduct a cross-sectional study uh, in household and healthcare centers to uh, investigate uh, uh, the vaccine hesitancy and the different indicator that can influence uh, the uh, vaccine hesitancy across the country. So um, in terms of purpose, uh, these are some uh, key elements where uh, what X is very focused, specifically to characterize this population and, and compare the different population, uh, general population of healthcare workers, and to uh, investigate uh, the, 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 to, the to investigate the perception of uh, people about COVID, to investigate the perception of people about COVID vaccine, and to uh, determine the level of acceptance, hesitancy, and refusal of uh, COVID vaccination, and to uh, identify the factor influencing the, this attitude of hesitancy, and to measure those factors all factors across the time, across the country, and over the time across the country and to compare uh, the dynamic uh, from one country to another one and from one time A to uh, another time B. And also what is very important is to identify why people are hesitant, why people refuse to get vaccinated. And one important also things uh, um, that X uh, investigate is to investigate children vaccination hesitancy because this is a one of uh, the majority of uh, COVID vaccine hesitancy, because if people get hesitant to get COVID vaccine, they may also uh, adapt to take a, a, or their routine immunization vaccine. So these are some results uh, from uh, a survey conducted uh, in 2000, in April and May 2020 in uh, the five uh, uh, West African countries of the consortium. And it is only based on the general population, and we uh, measure some indicator uh, like uh, perception uh, for uh, risk, percep uh, risk perception of getting um, perception of COVID vaccine. So I'm going to present, uh, uh, yeah, this uh, take a slide about the this, the funding from this consortium. So as we can see, this uh, question was to ask people about how they are worried about getting COVID-19. Uh, COVID so we can see that Mali uh, was uh, found like the country with the uh, highest proportion of people who were really getting, uh, who were really worried about getting COVID-19 and compared to Senegal where uh, a few people say they are very worried to get uh, COVID-19. So, this is uh, about uh, the risk perception of getting COVID. So these people who are feeling at risk to get COVID. So also Mali come at top uh, with uh, Sierra Leone, in this case, or people, or people who report that they are feeling at risk of getting COVID. So uh, compared to uh, Burkina, uh, many people uh, in Burkina reports compared to their country, uh, Burkina and Senegal say um, many people from this country say uh, they are not feeling at risk of getting COVID. So this is also about uh, feeling, uh, uh, reporting um, COVID vaccine as uh, safe. So uh, this also, as we can see, many people say they don't know, but uh, one important thing here is the Senegal, um, Many people also report uh, compared to their countries like uh, the COVID vaccine are not safe at all. 
So this is about the concern uh, uh, about COVID side effect, COVID vaccine side effect. And Senegal also and Burkina are the country where uh, many people report uh, that COVID vaccine uh, side effects are uh, really serious than uh, compared to other country. So we also identify, uh, uh, also try to identify the information source to uh, get uh, uh, an idea how information are vehiculated. Uh, so we found like uh, the main source of information in uh, uh, four country uh, are TV, uh, is TV. And this is uh, from Burkina, uh, Mali, uh, Senegal and Guinea. So Sierra Leone is the only country where the uh, people, where people report like uh, the main source of information is radio. So as you can see, it can be different from one country reliably. So this slide show uh, actually uh, the uh, vaccine hesitancy, what we uh, ask here. So was, uh, if a vaccine is available, so would you uh, accept to get vaccinated? So these are the different uh, answer uh, distributed across the countries. So uh, as you can see, uh, Burkina is the country where uh, many people uh, say, as you see, the orange and yellow are like the vaccine hesitancy. So it was very really important in, in this uh, country, people refuse and and to get people say they will not definitely no take COVID vaccine or probably no, uh, probably yes, they were not sure. So we also assess uh, the child vaccination, as I said, so we can say also like uh, it's different uh, from one country. And uh, yeah, fortunately, Mali, uh, North Guinea is uh, the country where people are really uh, happy uh, to get uh, COVID vaccine. Uh, definitely, they say definitely yes uh, for themselves or for, for children. So we identify, try to uh, run a multiple logistic uh, regression and which found uh, some important information uh, related to, uh, associated to the, pers the, to the vaccine hesitancy. So the first important uh, factor is the perception of uh, uh, protection, vaccine protection. So you can see like in Burkina, so this was, uh, the prevalence ratio was very higher uh, in compared to other country. So um, the second factor, which was very significant was um, the uh, vaccine safe, safety was also found uh, associated with the hesitancy in Senegal. So, these data are from this publication, which recently come out from BMG Open. So um, this is work was done by uh, the consortium. As uh, you can see, I will uh, advise you, I uh, will recommend you uh, to read this paper. It uh, provides many information about uh, vaccine hesitancy uh, in West Africa. So now in consortium, um, the uh, perspective, like the current uh, way we are going is uh, to study, instead of doing cross-sectional uh, study to identify, to, to investigate vaccine hesitancy, we are now uh, conducting a longitudinal study which will allow us to uh, study the dynamic uh, of uh, vaccine hesitancy uh, across the time and um, across the country. So this also, this is on way. So we are uh, uh, planning to conduct a, a fourth survey in the consortium. So this is a plan in, in, in a couple of months. So also it's uh, important to know that the consortium is now working to uh, diversify the, uh, the, the focus uh, instead of uh, working on COVID on vaccine hesitancy only. So uh, now we are working to uh, investigate the weakness of our uh, immunization system within the consortium. So this is also in perspective and future plans. 
and also to be uh, one of uh, the good scientific uh, product of uh, on vaccination in general. So this is how um, we are planning, how we are going. And some few words to conclude, uh, despite many efforts of uh, community engagement, um, despite uh, um, the vaccine availability, uh, we can see like um, as of April, so we have a very um, good indicator about vaccine productivity because we have more than 30 COVID vaccine available. And we also have um, about uh, 64.5% uh, of uh, global population who are having, uh, who have received at least one dose of vaccine. So which is good, in, which is quite getting good globally, but uh, in Africa, we are still having challenges. And as we can see, only 12.8% uh, of uh, uh, population in Africa are fully vaccinated compared to 57.5% uh, uh, globally. So that means in West Africa, uh, effort are still needed uh, to engage community, to engage policy makers, to uh, engage all the stakeholders to really uh, reinforce uh, uh, the, um, any, the implementation uh, facilitators to, of a COVID vaccine. So this, this is really needed. Uh, and so to finish this uh, um, short presentation, so I will uh, uh, end with uh, this word from Nelson Mandela. Uh, who said, uh, after climbing a great hill, one only finds that there are many more hills to climb. So that means it's ongoing implementation research is something ongoing and we don't have to stop climbing. So thank you very much for your attention. Uh, I will be very happy to answer to your question uh, if you, you have any. Thank you very much, Sehomar Gumbuya, for that great, precise, and apt presentation on COVID-19 vaccine hesitancy within the consortium of countries that you specified. And you delve on so many important things, uh, telling us that COVID-19 vaccine hesitancy is one of the top 10 global threats, global health threats, which is something that is very interesting. And this is fueled by the infodemic like so many informations out there, you know, especially stemming from uh, the AstraZeneca side effects that were coming in from Europe and other countries and raising a lot of doubts. Uh, so therefore this has led to so many people being hesitant to take the vaccine. So, but you guys have done a great job, uh, I must say, uh, within these countries you know so it's a brilliant presentation and um, your future plans is to investigate the weakness of the immunization system within the consortium which is also a very interesting future plan and uh, few people have taken the vaccine in the west african in africa generally 12 percent is is very small and like you ended by the quote from nelson mandela that there are many more hills to climb uh, there's still a lot of work to do to um, to encourage people to take up this vaccine but uh, before we open the lines for people to really ask their questions, I think I'll be the first person to ask a question. I mean, you guys have come all the way to Senegal to do this research. Senegal is a neighbor to the Gambia. Why didn't you people encroach within the shores of Gambia uh, to also, you know, conduct a research within the Gambia? I think that would be something that is very interesting. You'll have interesting findings, but uh, that's just by the way. So without further ado, I would like to invite uh, the audience to, to ask Professor Dumbuya any questions that you might have. Thank you very much. <laughs> okay, so so just to correct, not Professor Dumbuya, but uh, uh, Dr. Shekmar Dumbuya. <laughs> so, and yeah, as you said, so this consortium, I will not be able to say a lot about uh, how it was uh, setting, how the country were selected. But uh, yeah, so it is from a long-term collaboration. So 
this institute were working together before COVID and uh, COVID um, was another opportunity to undertake a, a new uh, research topic and to uh, carry out on yeah, emerging uh, disease. So I'll, unfortunately, I will not so, uh, be able to say why Gambia was not selected or why Mauritania was not selected. But uh, yeah, hopefully um, we will uh, also spread the collaboration in the region. But uh, my mentor is here, uh, Daniela Fusco. I don't know. He's the PI of uh, the project, and he's uh, uh, she's the PI of the project, and she she's the one who um, connects all these institutes together and undertake uh, uh, this uh, uh, incredible study in in uh, West African region. So yeah, Daniela, please can you have? Sure. Your... Sure, it's just that I don't want to intervene too much in your uh, presentation. That was very good. Thanks a lot, Shek. And, uh, and of course, uh, we agree that uh, it would be nice to have the studies done, uh, the study done probably in the entire West Africa or in the entire Africa. <laughs> but of course, the logistical and financial uh, uh, challenges, of course, put limits. So the selection of the, of the countries was made uh, on, the, on a cultural basis, mostly, and you're right that Gambia for sure share a lot with Senegal, uh, but nevertheless, we try to focus on, uh, on the bigger country who could be more representative of the area, part uh, of the, um, uh, the ECOVAS, part uh, of the uh, uh, CFAO partly, because Sierra Leone is not part of that, um, but at the same time, we thought very relevant to put Sierra Leone together with this bench of Francophone country, because uh, it was sharing with, uh, with Guinea the experience of Ebola. No? So we tried to put together a reasonable number of countries that we could logistically and financially handle, that had some cultural and geographical connection. So this was the basic for the selection. Thank you very much, Daniela. So uh, over to you, uh, Joseph. Yes, uh, it's understandable uh, the reasons for the selection. Uh, anyways, so I don't want to delve further into that. I don't know if anybody in the audience has anything to ask. Uh, he doesn't want to be called professor, so we'll call him Dr. Sheikh Omar Dumbuya. So I don't know if anyone in the audience or the host, Ndihi or Braima, if you have any questions, uh, you are welcome to put it forward and Sheikh will help us with, with the answer. Uh, thank you very much for a wonderful presentation. Uh, it provides a good insight about the current uh, vaccine hesitancy. So it's uh, not only the problem in Africa, but it's a global problem these days. I'm currently in uh, Australia and I was also presenting us a, a presentation for tomorrow on vaccine awareness. So while I was going through my slides, I realized that even in Australia, the vaccine hesitancy has been increasing these days. So uh, just a brief uh, information regarding the vaccine status in Australia is that uh, about 94% of Australians have got their second dose, but uh, but for the booster dose, the hesitancy is increasing. And uh, till now, after uh, since the booster dose, uh, booster dose was introduced in October, and now it's uh, the, towards the end of April, that means in six months, the booster dose uptake is just uh, 60%. Although all of those, uh, majority of those who have already got their second dose are eligible for the booster dose, still the booster dose hesitancy is increasing. So it's a global problem and we need to address it uh, through uh, different uh, strategies. So as a part of IR Connect, and this is a program that is organized by IR, so I would like to ask you if we can have any sort of collaboration to help uh, to get uh, or to gather more information regarding vaccine hesitancy. Is there any way out that we can involve or engage each other in this uh, noble task to uh, understand in, in depth about uh, the different issues related to vaccine hesitancy. Probably in, in some of the countries, it might be the access, which is uh, the major issue behind why people are not getting enough dose of vaccine, but for others, there are there may be other causes. 
there might be some religious causes as well, a religious reason behind vaccine hesitancy as well. So nowadays, the protein vaccine has also been introduced and it is uh, especially, specifically in, in those communities where uh, the, uh, the, the, there is a religi religious belief regarding vaccine hesitancy. Uh, there are newer types of vaccines that has been introduced. So I think uh, it, it would be a better idea to uh, explore how we can engage TDR community for this novel research. Perfect. If I can add here, Shek, sorry, just, uh, just to say, I would like um, maybe Shek next year can present again, uh, because the beauty of our data is that, uh, as you said, uh, we have uh, repeated cross-sectional, um, and uh, um, probably you didn't have the time to mention that our question was slightly adapted, uh, because indeed, we are indeed looking into the, uh, the difficulties related, for example, to the boost dose, that of course this is not uh, something new that the boost those uh, vaccination scheme uh, is not the easiest way to go for logistic but also for residency this is not new but it's true that with the uh, COVID-19 we are seeing uh, um, uh, incredible uh, uh, rates uh, of refusal of second or third doses. No, so we are looking into that. We are looking into uh, accessibility, of course, because this is clear that can be uh, an indicator. So the beauty of our data is that we have the possibility. We have, had, have had the possibility to uh, to explore this factor of over time, adapting on the basis of the of the context, no, the social and uh, cultural context in which is evolving uh, the vaccination history let's say of COVID-19. Thank you. Thank you once again, Daniela. Joseph, over to you. Yes, okay. We want to appreciate um, uh, Mr. Brahma for openness to collaboration and support in whatever way and uh, Professor Daniela for her also her contributions and she's also welcome on board uh, formally. So I don't know if anyone else has anything else to say before we hand over to the host. If anyone else has something to say? Anyone? Uh, I saw Trusilla on board. I don't know if Trusilla is still here. Astiambo, please, if you have anything to say about the presentation, Kulibali, uh, Diko, Jiang, good. Uh, yeah, D Diko. Hello. Yes, Diko. Uh, can you hear me? Hello. Yes, we can hear you. Go ahead. Oh, okay. We can hear Thank you. you. Thank you, Mister. Uh, Dumia. Thank you. Great, great talk. Uh, I noticed that uh, during your presentation, uh, according to your results, uh, it, it, it looks like hesitancy is, uh, is low in uh, countries like uh, Sierra Leone and, uh, and Guinea. So, as compared to the other countries, I mean, so do you think there is a link uh, between the fact that these countries have been previously affected by the Ebola pandemic? Yeah. That's one question. And uh, the second one, this, this is maybe a contribution. So I think you only use a, a quantitative design to address the question, right? Uh, okay. No, it's, it, it was uh, uh, semi-structure. Uh, okay. So there were many open questions. Uh, but we are trying to realize the answer of this. Uh, uh, of the data of this uh, open question, so which are not already uh, on process, but not published yet. Ah, okay, I see, I see, I see. Okay, so that, that's okay for me. 
So go ahead for the for the question. Okay. Uh, yeah, Joseph, can I? Okay. So yeah, Please, to, yeah, and yeah, the uh, and it's the very very important uh, uh, question, like uh, the link of uh, vaccine hesitancy and uh, Ebola outbreaks in Guinea and Sierra Leone. Yeah, and sure, I will say uh, true. They might have a link because uh, we can have the assumption like those uh, population already uh, know how outbreaks is because they suffer for um, uh, many months of that. They know how it is and they are really uh, likely to accept any solution that can prevent uh, an outbreak because they know how it's really, how it's really very dangerous. So compared to Burkina or Mali, so those countries were not very affected by Ebola. So we can say maybe um, they may have any uh, the link to this country because of uh, the perception they really uh, lack uh, sufficient knowledge on how how bad a um, pandemic on outbreak can go. So sure, when you will learn the when you will uh, read the papers, there are. Uh, some paragraph on that, uh, that also can uh, give many explanation about this question of link of Ebola and, and, and vaccine hesitancy. So thank you very much. Uh, Ilo, is your question uh, answered or you might, you need a more explanation? Yeah, it is, it is Dr. Dumia. Th thank you. But I, I want one, uh, one, one, one more question. Uh, so, you already you, you you also talked about uh, vaccination in children, but in the special case of Mali, children are not allowed to be vaccinated. I mean, children less than eighteen. So, how how did you how did you do to get the the, the data uh, for for these uh, these children? Okay, so as it is, it is not so. Uh, um... Uh, like to investigate on the on available vaccine because COVID also can affect children and there is also a possibility to get also vaccine for COVID for children. So the question was like, if there is any uh, vaccine available for children, so will you get your child uh, get vaccinated? So this was the question. the question. So the question was not saying that there is any vaccine for children. So it was global. And we also ask uh, for a uh, question about uh, the general uh, immunization because uh, one of the tweets of vaccine hesitancy is uh, to affect the, the routine immunization. That can lead uh, also to another global health problem right? because of many diseases uh, which are already controlled by vaccination uh, can come back and, and, and be worse, even worse than COVID. So this is a, one of the tweets, uh, one of the concern of uh, uh, measuring uh, or investigating uh, this um, underlying this uh, um, children uh, routine immunization. So that's why we, we are also interested in that and we want to go further uh, to find uh, any impact of uh, vaccine hesitancy and routine immunization. Yeah, I've got it. Thank you, Dumia. So uh, I forgot to, to, to talk about myself. I'm Ilo Diko from UCRC. I'm also uh, an alumni from TDR, uh, the University of Ghana. I'm from the second court. Thank you. Up to you, Joseph. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Ilo Diko. That was a very important and interesting question. Uh, those are very, very intelligent questions, I must say. And um, Seoma Dumbia also equally gave very interesting responses. Yes, there might be a link. We don't know. Maybe that could only be established through a study. There might be a link between uh, the acceptance of this COVID vaccine and the previous experiences that these people had with uh, the outbreak of, of, of Ebola. So um, any other question from anyone? Or does anybody have any comment? Any comment on on the presentation? 
did I see Claudia Atta's hand up? Claudia, I think I saw something like Claudia Atta. Is that so? Okay, no, maybe maybe not. Okay, Dumbuya, do you have any final words to say before we call it a day? It looks like nobody else has anything else to say. Yeah, I am seeing Brema hands up. I don't know if uh, Brema says something. Yeah, check. Uh, yes. Hello, everyone. Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Dumbia, for your good, great presentation. And uh, thank you also to your team for the relevant uh, results. However, I have a question about your, your study result. Uh, do you think your result is extrapolated uh, to all African country or just the country, the study country? Thank you. Yeah, and the sample size was uh, 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 yeah, calculated based on, uh, on the, the, the area. So the, this question, yeah, you can say it's also it's possible to extrapolate in the uh, studied, is, uh, studied population. Like the five countries we study, it's possible to calculate, uh, to extrapolate in and generalize in this population but not in at, at, at global level because we estimate the sample size and the accurate sample size before uh, uh, distributing the number uh, across uh, different countries. Is your question answered or if you want to give another comment? Yeah, thank you. Thank you, it's good. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, Brahima. Uh, so, Sehomar, you might want to wrap up, or maybe if your prof wants to say something, or the hosts, uh, they are welcome to say it before we wrap up and call it a day. Okay. Uh, yeah, just to thank you once again for uh, joining this uh, short uh, presentation. So, I'm uh, really grateful for your, uh, for your time and yeah, so we keep in touch and look forward for another opportunity like this to share uh, research funding, to share uh, uh, opportunity. So thank you, thank you, thank you very much. Okay, and I don't know if Daniela want to say something, uh, otherwise uh, we can uh, ask Nidhi to say something. Daniela? Yeah, we want to hear. From Dehi. Or oh, Daniela, Daniela just on the mic. She probably No, no, I just wanted to say that there is no need. You said everything. This is your webinar, not mine. It's okay. It's all good. And thanks a lot for hosting. Yeah, my boss, you're my supervisor. I want to just want to know that Daniela is a very kind uh, person. So she is teaching me a lot and she had gave me the opportunity to uh, learn a lot in within this consortium. And so I'm uh, I'm really uh, having uh, many advantages with uh, this uh, multi sampling study. So thank you very much to, to Nindi. Over to you, Nindi. Thank you, Chek. Just wonderful uh, presentation. So uh, yeah, thank you so much uh, for joining everyone. Just uh, we thought of having a community uh, with us uh, in a Moodle platform and uh, we are uh, uh, organizing webinars and interview series uh, for all the alumni. So I'm sharing one uh, Google form in the chat. So if you are interested to organize a webinar, you can uh, fill out the form and we'll be reaching to you for the same. Uh, the main aim behind this, these webinars is to connect um, IR uh, graduates and IR alumni from different parts of the world uh, together and also share their experiences with each other and so that we can discuss about potential uh, opportunities for collaboration among ourselves. I think uh, this is the third or fourth of the webinar uh, from the series uh, that we held uh, for the last three months. So we are planning to have at least one of the one webinar every month. 
our our initial plan is to have two, but uh, to start with, we are having uh, at least one webinar per per month. So if it gets going, and if uh, many of people, many of us are enthusiastic about these webinars, we plan to increase the frequency to uh, twice a month. But it needs support from all of us, and it's it's all about growing together uh, to help uh, and to ex share the experiences of each other. Thank you, Sandesh. Sandesh is our uh, chairperson for the IA Connect committee. So thank you, Sandesh, for the kind words. So that's it, I guess. Shall we uh, close this then? Yeah. Right. So thank you, Chek. Thank you a lot. Welcome and thank you very much, Nidhi and all. Bye. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Bye.